Hey now, what's up everybody? My name is Mike Brown, aka Review King MB, and I'm sure everybody, including myself, is anxiously anticipating waiting for Civil War, the new Captain America movie coming out. So I admit I stole this idea from Superhero News. They watched, they marathoned all of the Marvel movies in preparation for this, so I said, well, I should just do it with them. <laughs> and while doing that, I'm deciding to stop between each movie and talk about them to get ready for Civil War. It makes sense. I love these Marvel movies so much, and some of these movies I haven't posted a proper review for, so it makes sense. This is my chance to get my thoughts out there. We are starting with Iron Man. This is a 2008 film that kick-started, jump-started the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And going back and re-watching this movie now is fascinating for so many reasons. First, let me talk about Robert Downey Jr. Now, we're so far into these Marvel movies that by this point, it's a no-brainer. It's obvious that Robert Downey is Tony Stark, is Iron Man. There's nobody else that we could think of to play this character who could have been this character this whole time but in retrospect when you watch that this movie was made back in 2008 Robert Downey Jr. was so down and out in Hollywood from the drugs and, and being in jail and just a lot of a big fall from grace he has he had been acting for years and years but just it was going to shit so the fact that the studio gave him a chance. More importantly, John Favreau, who directed this movie, went to bat for him and and like begged Marvel to put him in this movie. It's just it almost didn't happen. Because look at the way Tony Stark is written, especially in the beginning of this movie where it's before he becomes a hero, you see that he's a drunk, he he's irresponsible, he doesn't really give a shit about uh his company and where his weapons are actually being sold to he, he's just he's not aware he doesn't know what's going on in his company and it's not until at the very beginning uh, when he gets ambushed attacked and kidnapped taken in Afghanistan I remember seeing this in the theaters it was 2008 I was like 19 years old and I had loved superhero movies already by that point. I loved, you know, the cartoons and comic books. But this movie sort of reminded me, it was one of them that reminded me that these films could be better. <laughs> Just better. Uh, the moments where it does have a serious tone, a dark tone. I remember in the theater seeing him strung up and being recorded and just with the bag over it. So I'm like, this is pretty heavy. This almost in some ways hits close to home. When you see that his heart was literally taken out and it's being charged by a battery, it's, it's fascinating to see him sit there and recreate the armor even when he gets out and he's actually literally building the Iron Man suit from the ground up and you're seeing how he does it with a box of scraps he he creates the suit and I know at this point we know the suit and we're totally with it where we buy it but the fact that this movie spends so much time with him creating the suit designing the suit even the colors of it even the montage scenes of him learning to fly with it and the funny scenes of how it, it malfunctions Little stuff like that, normally you could sit there and say that maybe you don't like origin stories because it spends so much time getting to the hero moment, but you have so much fun watching him do all of this. It's some of the best parts of the movie. This is how you handle an origin. You don't make it taxing. You don't make it boring to have to sit through and watch. No, you make it just as fun as everything else going on in this movie. Gwyneth Paltrow, who plays Pepper Potts, because... I love Gwyneth Paltrow. I think she's a great actress, and I heard that Robert Downey like really had to convince her to do this movie because she wasn't really keen on, on doing a superhero film. So I love that she sort of gave in and did it. 
But I also like just her character. She starts off in this movie as just his assistant. And as somebody that you never really think something's going to happen between them. Until they have some moments. And they have some moments in this movie where they do have some chemistry, some romance. But the movie doesn't hit you over the head with it. It's not all about that. It's almost setting groundwork for things to come. And I even love the moment where she she has to get in there and go into his chest to change the the arc reactor. Funny moment. The moment where she has to sneak into Obadiah Stane's office and finds what she finds, the files. Very tense moment. The scene where she's with Stark at that party and they're on the roof and they almost kiss. They almost have a moment. But then he leaves her there because he gets cut off by Jeff Bridges and just a bunch of stuff happens to where you almost forget that that happens until later on she brings it back up and tells them, yeah, by the way, you ruined the moment and left me up there. Good freaking job. So I just, I feel like for a possible love interest, she's written a little better. The elephant in the room. Terrence Howard does play Rhodey in this movie. I know we're all used to uh, Don Cheadle playing the character now, War Machine. It's very interesting to go back and watch Terrence Howard's version of Rhodey because it is different. I think I think Terrence Howard plays it a little bit more serious, a little bit more straight. I like Terrence Howard. I liked him in this movie. I guess for continuity's sake, it would have been nice to keep him to the next film or subsequent films. But you know what? If he really was being a prima donna, if he really was that pissed about not getting paid more money than Downey in the sequels. And you know what? Fuck him. <laughs> Fuck him. And I, and I don't want to say that because I like him. Jeff Bridges, I mentioned, as Obadiah Stane. Jeff Bridges is such a great actor, such a great villain. It's almost funny to rewatch it and me not realize that he was the villain the first time I watched it because it's almost right there in front of you. There's so many little clues and so many little like looks that he has to where it's like, yeah, this guy is evil, but you don't see it at first because he also is charming and he is somewhat likable. Him and Downey do have a chemistry where it feels like they've known each other for a long time and so I guess you just don't want to believe it. But when he does go full evil, when he does start doing the things that he does, it shows. And it works, I think. Some people will complain that the end fight between Stain and, and Stark, it, it just comes out of nowhere and, and they don't understand the motivations there. It's like, you know what? I don't care. <laughs> I don't care because not only is the fight really cool, the huge giant version of the suit that Jeff Bridges has, but when you read that this script was barely a script, while they were shooting the movie, it was like they were writing as they were going. They were writing as they were shooting this movie. Look at how integral, how important this first Marvel Studios movie was. Look at how much it changed and shaped the future movies that were to come. It's amazing to me that not only were they not fully prepared or, or ready as much as they probably should have been, I'm sure they were just changing the script over and over again, but this could have been a disaster. This movie could have and should have sucked balls. This movie should have been terrible, and it wasn't. And that is obviously because of Robert Downey Jr., how charismatic he is, how likable he is, how funny he is, how relatable he is. But John Favreau's directing. Here's a guy who directed a few comedies here and there, but he wasn't really known for that. And he, and he makes his first big budgeted huge movie and knocks it out of the park. It's really this movie and, and to this movie alone that is the success of why Marvel is what it is today. And that's why I love this movie as much as I do. I appreciate it as much as I do. So many years later, it still holds up. The humor still works. The CGI still looks good. The action's so good. It's a, it's a greatly paced movie. This is still to this day one of Marvel's best movies, if not their best movie. It like For me, it's in two with three as far as places go. It's hard. For so many years, this was number one. But I love it. I love it. It's one of the Marvel movies I've seen the most, for obvious reasons. So guys, let me know in the comments below 
What do you think of Iron Man 1? Is it as good as I say it is? Would you disagree? Let's talk about this. It's the road to Civil War. It's very exciting. Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Later!